in this video we are going to talk about arrays and matrices in MATLAB. An array is just a structured set of numbers. So if you are a teacher and you are grading your five students on an exam, so the grades of those five students would be stored as five numbers and those numbers would be the elements of an array. On the other hand, a matrix is very similar to an array. It is in fact a subset of an array. The way to write a matrix in MATLAB is by using these square brackets. So whatever you write between these square brackets, MATLAB knows that you are writing a matrix. And when I press enter, it stores the value of X as a matrix which has one row and three columns. So I call it a matrix as one cross three. Now another way of defining a row matrix in MATLAB is by using the colon operator. You use the colon operator in this manner, a start number, colon, and an end number. So if I write this and I press enter, I'm going to get a row matrix, which starts from one, goes up to it n, and by default, the jump between the numbers is going to be of one unit. Similarly, if I write two to five, it is going to start from two, jump one unit between each number and go up to five. Now, Let's say if I do not want the jump to be one unit, but I want a jump to be some other number. So I can write it a little differently. What I do is I make use of this. I start with the start number, then a colon, then the jump number, then the colon, then the end number. I press enter. And here it starts with one. It jumps two units to get to three. It jumps again two units to get to five. Again two units to get to seven. Again two units to get to nine. And notice that I defined the end number, so it can never go above 10. So once it is at 9, it tries to jump by another two numbers, but it exceeds the limit, so it stops. So notice that this end point doesn't have to be contained in the matrix. Similarly, there are times when I do not just want to define the start point, end point, and the jumps, but I only want to define the start point and the end points and I need to define how many numbers there should be between the start and the end points. So I make use of a built-in function in MATLAB, which is DIN space. So how it works is I write DIN space and in brackets, I write the start number, end number, and the number of divisions I want. I press enter and here I get a row matrix with start number as 0 and number as 5 and there are 10 divisions and all of these divisions are equally spaced. Now we have talked about making a row matrix. How do I make a column matrix which is also known as a vector? The process is very simple. I again make use of these square brackets and whenever I need to go to another row I make use of the semicolon operator. So here when I press enter, you see that it forms a matrix which has three rows and one column. So I call this a three cross one matrix. Now if I need to make another matrix, I can write this. So here when I press enter, you see that there are two rows in the matrix and each row has three columns or three elements. So it is a two cross three matrix. Now, if I write this and when I press enter, you see that there are two rows in the matrix and each row has 10 elements. And by using the colon operator, I define that in, that in the first row, it should start from one and at 10 and there is a difference of one unit. Similarly, let me make another matrix. I make this matrix which I have called 5 matrix and here it is a 5 cross 5 matrix. So it starts from 1 and goes all the way to 25. Now uh, let me write this again. Now let's say I want to access this matrix, not the entire matrix but some particular elements of this matrix. Let's say I want to access the 8 number here which is at the index of the second row and the third column. So the way to access a particular index of a matrix or a particular element of a matrix is by writing the matrix name and within the circular brackets, I write the row number and the column number. So I've written 
2 as the row number which is the second row and I have written the third column so I am referring to this number here I press enter and I get the answer similarly if I were to access the element as at the fifth row and the first column which is 21 I will write 5 comma 1 and I get 21 now there are times when I do not know the end point of a matrix so what I can do is instead of writing this 5 which is the last row so I use a keyword which is the end so by writing end I am referring to the last row of the matrix I press enter it is outputting the element which is at the fifth row and the first column I can use end for columns as well so if I write this what it tells my table is I am talking about the fifth row and the fifth column I press enter and I get the number 25 stored in a variable x square now let me go a step further and let's say I now need to access the entire first row of this matrix. I can do this by writing this. So in this I am referring to the first row of the matrix. And in the column section I within the square brackets I have defined the columns that I want. So I have written 1 through 5 which means that I want all the columns of this matrix. I press enter and I get the entire first row. Similarly, if I need to extract just the second row, I am going to write instead of one, I'm going to write two and the column numbers would remain the same. I press enter and I get the second row. Now, if I need to extract the second row, another easier way is you write two, which is the second row. And instead of defining the column numbers in this way, you can simply make use of the colon operator and write one to five and it would mean the same thing. Similarly, you can also make use of this and if I just need the first the first column I can write this I press enter and I get the first column or I can even make use of this to get the first column. Another even better way when you need to access all the rows or all the columns in a matrix is instead of writing one to end which means that you want to access either all the rows or all the columns of a matrix you just simply write the colon operator so here instead of defining what rows I want I just write the colon operator without a start and end point so what this means it is I want to access all the rows in this matrix so this means that all the rows in this matrix which are the five rows and the first column I press enter and I get the first column similarly if I write this it means that I want to get the second row and in place of columns I have written this colon operator so it means I need the second row and all the columns so which means that I need to get all of these rows I press enter and I get the second row if I need to extract a subset of this matrix the way to do is by using this so you def you write the name of the matrix and within the bracket you write the rows and the columns and in rows I have written 2 to 5th so I am referring to the 2nd, 3rd and 4th and 5th row which is this, this, this and this and in the columns I am referring to the 2nd to the 4th column so which is the 2nd column to the 4th column and when I press enter I get a subset of this matrix so I have extracted a few elements from this matrix to form another matrix now there are times when you want to find out the size of the matrix as in how many rows are there in the matrix and how many columns are there in the matrix. So the way to do is you make use of the size function. So you write size and in the brackets you write the name of the matrix. So if I write 5 matrix, press enter, I get a 5 and a 5. The first number indicates the number of rows and the second number indicates the number of columns. If I write this, I press enter, I get 4 and 3, which means in this matrix here, there are 4 rows and there are 3 columns. Now, there are times when you have written a matrix, but you need to amend or change a few elements of the matrix. So the way to do is, let's say if you need to change this element right here, the 13 to let's say a number 20, the way to do is, is you access this element using this which is 3 cross 3 since so the 13 number is at 
the third row and the third column and you set this equal to another number 20 and when once I press enter you see the matrix has been updated and instead of 13 I get the number 20 this brings us to the end of this video if you found this video useful don't forget to subscribe and share and I highly recommend that you check the next video out in which we perform operations on matrices and as always see you in the next video